St. Mary's Knights. In just a few moments, we'll have the starting lineup for each team, but at this time, we ask that you please stand, remove your caps for the invocation and our national anthem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts you've given us. Help protect these young athletes from injury and harm as they compete tonight and continually watch over them as they display their skills, wisdom, and strengths. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We're 46 days into 2024, and these two teams here tonight have not lost the game into the new year. It's 5A's Ironwood taking on the St. Mary's Knights. 19 game winning streak up against the 15 game winning streak. It's the second round of the open playoffs. Jaden Taylor alongside Chris Farendorf ready to get us underway here inside Bull Gymnasium as Cam Williams wins the tip. And we get going, packed crowd here tonight. Yeah, like you mentioned, Jaden, these are two of the hottest teams in the state. The St. Mary's really battle-tested Ironwood and St. Mary's, both undefeated in region play as well. So this is going to be a really 
good game to watch, you know, and we thank you all for joining us tonight. Ironwood 24 and two this season. You mentioned 12 and 0 in the 5A Northwest. St. Mary's 22 and six, winning 15 straight. Williams on the near side will inbound it to Phipps. Caspian Jones, what a big return he's been coming here inside. Williams with 15 to shoot. Now to Phipps to the left wing. Phipps working on Jones. Now a switch. Tries baseline. Tough shots. And it misses out. Quickly up the floor, Shadow Vine. Now Shadow Vine, the point guard, the junior, five foot nine. Now in the corner, an open three. <laughs> Phipps working the other way. Good dish over to Williams. Tough mid range shot, rings up and out. The Eagles working in transition. Carabio working on Jones, stops his feet. Now to Dillard. Dillard on Williams. Has to give it back over. Shadow Vine, just under seven assists this season, leads the team. Now in the corner, working baseline. Now to the near side, another open three, and there's a foul called. Noah Gift will go to the line for a trio of shots. Well, Noah Gift, he's the best player on this Ironwood team. It's what everyone says. He averages 23.4 points per game, but he also shoots an insane 48% from three. That's what you've seen so far. Both of his first two shots from the field were three-point shots. Makes his first. I mentioned Gift, third in free throws made this season in 5A. Third in points per game as well across the division. And leads the entirety of 5A with 112 three-pointers made. And he's probably not the guy you want to send to the free throw line. You know, on this Ironwood team, you definitely don't want to foul him on a three-point shot as well because then he can go three for three just like he did there from the charity strike. Six nothing early for the Eagles. St. Mary's got to answer just over a minute in. Phipps, now to Williams. At the top of the key would drive in. Beautiful dish to Jones. Almost loses it. Poked away. And a forced turnover. And Ironwood has won their last 19 straight. It's been since early December since the Eagles lost. Shadowvine. Now over to Jones. Now over to the top of the key. Here to Carabio. Carabio inside Shadowvine. Another tough shot in the ball. 8 0 starting for the Eagles. And the Ironwood faithful is loud early. And St. Mary's coach Damon Lopez uses a timeout. You got to control your team down, and you have to know the scouting report. You know, everyone said, including the highlights, including the film, that Noah Gift is going to be the one with the ball in his hands, him and Shadowvine, that is, and Gift is going to be the one taking the three point shots. If you're St. Mary's, you have to hone in on those two players as they are the two that will be ball handling and facilitating the most for this Ironwood team. Gift, the 6'3 senior, and all up and down the leaderboards these past two seasons here for Ironwood. And St. Mary's out of the timeout will inbound from their own baseline. Phipps and Nguyen Duma to bring it up. Styles Phipps, the GCU commit, driving in and forces a foul on the floor. And I think we're gonna hear a lot of that tonight. Phipps driving it early and forcing hacks on him. Well, and that's what he's gonna to have to do because these Eagles defenders are shorter and smaller and they just don't have the frame that the point guard of St. Mary's does. Up to Caspian Jones and Phipps will get the switch. One on one, step back three. No good short. And picked up by Carabio. Fifth and 5A with three pointers made. 68 this season. Another guy to look at from beyond the arc. He drives in baseline and lays it in. 10 0 early. Light to Moon Zumba. Five and a half left to go in this first quarter. Williams pulls up from three. He's got it. St. Mary's needed that. They needed a bucket from anyone on this court just to kind of settle things down offensively. Williams, a sophomore wing, able to show he's able to shoot from anywhere on this court. Down with the key, driving in Carabio on Phipps. Brings it back over. Thought about a three was Diller, but he traveled. 
Yep, and Josh Dillard, the scouting report, says he's not necessarily a three-point shooter, so a little bit surprising to see him step out behind that three-point arc. And a sophomore, a six-foot-five power for mainly been the guy to match up against Cam Williams in the middle. 10-3 in favor of the Eagles early. As now though, Cam Williams to the right wing, drives in, going Dumba. Trying to feed it inside, gives it out to Jones. Left block, now to White. Another open three, just goes too long. And it looks like they're gonna call a push underneath. St. Mary's gonna have the chance to set up their full court press right now for the first time in tonight's action. We saw this for us nearly double digit turnovers, night in and night out, but a little bit slower here. Working along, Shadow Vine dishes it off. Caden Wessel just came in, pulls up from the free throw line, and it's missed. Ball goes out of bounds, and they'll call it off of Caspian Jones. I think that's one Styles Phipps thought was off Ironwood, that's why he didn't attempt to chase it. But either way, if you're St. Mary's, you have to be able to retain those rebounds. Maud Makui was the one with some pressure inside. He just checked in after the most recent stretch. Also seeing Landon Brownstein in the lineup right now for Ironwood. Into the corner, dump inside, and an easy two. Makui gets his first points of the day, and it's a nine point lead for the Eagles. Halfway through this first quarter, Phipps driving in, and another fourth foul on the floor. And if you're Ironwood, you can do that for so long, and I think they'd rather have that early, but at some point, something's gonna give. Well, we're gonna see how long these officials how long of a leash they give these Ironwood defenders because every time Phipps gets the ball, it's a grab or a hold of the jersey so far. Brownstein hounding Phipps right now. He drives baseline, gets the angle, tough shot off the glass and in. That's the physicality that Styles Phipps brings. And it's back within seven. Shadow Vine with a double team look here. They get it past the timeline. Open three, it's good. Landon Brownstein, wide open, converts from beyond the arc. 15-5, Ironwood. Phipps, driving in, dishes it off. Williams to the rack, gets blocked from behind. Second chance, foul, shot does not go. Iron all I was going to say is Ironwood just does not have the size that St. Mary's does. And so if they're going to compete and retain this lead for the remainder of this you know, quarter and into the second, they have to be physical, which is what they're doing so far. And they have to force St. Mary's to play through contact. And so far, that's why Ironwood has been able to get out to a 10-point lead. Gift goes out. Blake Carabio comes in. Second shot for Williams, misses. Rings in and out. And a failed opportunity at the line there for St. Mary's. Shadow Vine working on Kenny White. But just over three to go here in this first quarter. Little floater rings true. Carabio with the two. And these Eagles players cannot miss from the floor so far. Jones pulls up mid range. That one's good. Jones. He's a guy I think gonna have to have a big night with the physicality that he brings inside. Hey, you can just see by looking at him on this court that he can bring the toughness and the physicality that maybe some of these Eagles players can't. Rambio gonna slow it down with 20 to shoot. Working on Mundumba. Driving baseline, double team now, gotta get it off. Brings it back around to the corner, Shadow Vine. Top of the key, Brownstein doesn't want it, stripped away, but he gets it back to his own handle, puts up a shot oh, and he somehow fouled. A wild shot put up by Landon Brownstein with just two to shoot and he'll go to the line. And that's just one of those fouls that kills a team. You know, you're already down, you're fighting through a, a long possession on defense and Brownstein throws up essentially a nothing shot and he's rewarded for two free throws. And this is the first, and a couple of changes coming in here for Ironwood. We'll see Jaden Jones come in, as well as Josh Dillard. Wessel and McCooey come out for the Eagles. Second shot for Brownstein is good. 
Anthony Maciel going to be the first substitution of this game. He's coming in for Caspian Jones with two minutes and 20 seconds left in this first quarter. We'll see how much of a factor that plays inside, maybe a more physical style of battle. Jones on the far corner. Out of Phipps, drives in, good pass. Puts up a floater, rings out. Williams trying to get the rebound, and it goes just past him. Press continues here. And working past his shadow vine. Drives in on Phipps, reverse layup is good. 20 to seven lead for Ironwood. Miles Phipps trying to take over, one on one. One on two right now, tough shot off the glass and no good. Now they're gonna call it travel. Sebastian Hatsikorzian in for AJ One Doom, but I think Coach Lopez is just looking for any spark of energy off of this bench. Phipps is frustrated after that call, he was driving in and he got called with the travel underneath. 90 seconds left to go in this first quarter. St. Mary's down by 13. Dish off inside, Jaden Jones doesn't want it. Now here to Shadow Vine in the corner. Mismatch inside. And there's no over to Gift. Gift with 15 to shoot, drives in, kisses it off the glass, no good. Up the other way, Hatsikorzian, the easy slam. That one looked easy for the sophomore forward. A good leak in transition for an easy bucket is what St. Mary's needed. Damon Lopez trying to shift through his group right now as there's a foul on Styles Phipps. The physical nature of St. Mary's is gonna be a factor. And the quickness and agility right now of Ironwood. Yeah, they're getting past these Knights defenders fairly easily. And a lot of their points have been right near the basket. Gift to inbound. With under a minute left to go, a long pass is Phipps. Really forcing the issue on Shadowvine right now. Driving in, Gift another chance is stripped away. White ends up handling it. 50 left to go in this first quarter. Phipps, open three, no good. Brought back up, Mossy Yell tried again, it's stripped away. Long inlet pass, way downtown three. Noah Gifts, the leader in 5A and three-point shooting, and he hits his second of the night. You just cannot leave that guy an inch of space. 23-9, shot clock is up for this first quarter. Acton Rock is here in Bull Gymnasium. 10 left to go in this first quarter. Phipps trying to get the switch, five seconds, gives it off. Kenny White an open three, no good. Maciel, second chance. That one, no good. And that will end the first quarter. Ironwood 23, St. Mary's nine. This probably one of the lowest scoring outputs of St. Mary's for a first quarter this entire season. But in the playoffs, as we're well aware, anything can happen. And you have to be able to respond to adversity. And luckily for St. Mary's, there's going to be three more quarters for them to do so. Slow start, but you look offensively. Who got to be the guys that got to step up and start hitting shots? Well, I mean, there's a lot of non-movement going on on offense right now. I think Styles Phipps is, is frustrated because there's, no, there's nowhere for him to go. You know, everywhere looks clogged in there defensively. And I think Ironwood is doing that on purpose. They're sagging off their man and forcing Styles to get double teamed, but I, I really think St. Mary's is just getting beat defensively down the court. Ironwood is doing a really good job of pushing this pace faster than St. Mary's, which is not something I thought I would say tonight. Yeah, we've seen a lot this season where St. Mary's has been the one to push the pace, especially with the backcourt defense, but they continue that to try to speed up Ironwood even more to force turnovers. Yeah, I mean, I. I can't imagine St. Mary's comes out and, and doesn't press when they when they can off a made basket. But at the same time, though, you have to be wary of letting these leak outs get behind you, especially if it's Noah Gift. Gift a pair of threes, also converted uh, three different free throws from the line after getting fouled. And he's in the lineup right now, working inside. Jones, rather Carabio now to the corner, this time Shadowvine. 
Shadowvine, now Carabio. Working one-on-one, and Hatsuk Korsi, little floaters, miss. Ball comes back down, no foul call on anybody as a couple bodies go to the floor. Gift double team in the corner, gotta give it away. Long throw, and it looks like a timeout was called by Ironwood head coach and Jordan Augustine. He was trying to get the, head, the timeout while Gift was trapped in that corner back there. These Ironwood coaches are trying to figure out whether they'll get the ball underneath the basket or on the sideline. But again, St. Mary's just looks all over the place on defense right now. They've got to figure out who each defender is guarding. Caspian Jones is going to check back in, but Cameron Williams is going to sit back down. And if you're St. Mary's, I don't think you can leave Cam Williams and AJ Mwandumba on the bench for long because of how they impact the game defensively. So we're going to see what this bench unit can provide for St. Mary's. David Rodriguez also in the senior wing. On to the baseline, Shadowvine gets it back off, and it's tipped out of bounds. They're going to call it off a of gift. The arrow is pointed to St. Mary's, but as of right now, ball's going to stay underneath the basket for Ironwood. Shadowvine now to give in the corner, working on Kenny White, a fresh shot clock to work with. Carabio trying to get a switch, and he does. Working on Caspian Jones now to Shadowvine. Giff, long three, no good. Tips with the rebound, and will push the pace. Kenny White, baseline, tries to ring it back around, and it's off an Ironwood defender and out of bounds. You have to be careful on those baseline passes. And I think if you're St. Mary's, just you have to go up with a quick shot. And Kenny White was open for just a second there. On Wednesday's game versus Mesa, he hit three of four threes, and that's something he has to be able to shoot tonight. Tough shot there for Styles Phipps. And it goes out of bounds off of Caspian Jones. And the shooting, not quite what it's been this season for St. Mary's here in this one. Iron Shadow Vine working on Phipps. We'll hand it back over to him. Shadow Vine just 5 9 working on Phipps right now. And now to Gifts. Shadow Vine again. Unable to find any interior presence right now is Ironwood. Now Jones trying to work baseline. They'll call him out of bounds. That's good defense by David Rodriguez to seal that baseline, force the Ironwood player out of bounds. Cameron Williams is going to sub in for Rodriguez now as St. Mary's is one player closer to that starting five. Yeah, Lopez and a bunch of the guys on the bench give him some fist bumps to Rodriguez after that defensive play. Six and a half to go in this first half. That's a Corzian now to Caspian Jones. Jones will drive in, puts up a tough shot. It rings in a new. In a new. That's that physicality you were talking about from Jones. He has to use that body and frame to his advantage. Gifts on Kenny White, blocked from behind. My goodness. Cam Williams swats that one away. And that's that type of interior pressure that we talked about needed to be a switch here in the second quarter. Yeah, Cam Williams, he averages 3.7 blocks per game, and that is something that St. Mary's will be needing tonight. 27 on the shot clock here as Gibbs got to get it in and they'll have a five second goal. Now they're forced turnover. And we'll see a couple changes here for Coach Jordan Augustine. This is where you have to capitalize if you're the Knights. You finally have some energy in the building, a couple consecutive stops. You have to con continue to convert on offense though in order to take advantage of them. Wetzel, Brownstein, and McCooey all in right now for Ironwood. Three different changes for the Eagles. Caspian Jones with six minutes left to go takes up a tough shot and it's right through the netting. A beautiful looking jump shot from the, ju the junior forward. You know, him and Cam Williams will be able to get their spots tonight because no Ironwood player is just has the wingspan of them. Mid-range shots have been so good this season. Or Caspian Jones, now inside 23 on 23. They're gonna call a travel. Brownstein was trying to give it in, but couldn't stop his feet. And third straight possession leads in a turnover for Ironwood. A surprising kind of iso ball possession there from Brownstein. Haven't seen him dribble the ball that many times consecutively until that possession. 10 point game. Caspian Jones to the right wing, dumps it inside. Big mismatch here. Williams puts up a shot and it's good. Another mid-range for Williams and 
He hasn't even really needed to be as physical. So good from mid-range. Shadow Vine trying to work around Phipps. Phipps is really making Shadow Vine work to get past half court on every possession. Well, everything right now and forces another turnover. Phipps dumps it off to Williams, to the rack. Pool Gymnasium Mays rocking. St. Mary's four consecutive defensive possessions, four consecutive turnovers. You want to talk about a way to get this entire building rocking, you got it right now. Styles Phipps, one on one the other way. Open oh, three. My goodness. Styles Phipps. Ice in his veins with an open three. And this ball game is backed within a possession. Now you knew the Knights were coming. They just cannot be quiet for that long. St. Mary's comes out for five consecutive possessions, five consecutive turnovers, and we're going to need some security down there because Ironwood is getting a little bit uh, out of contest here. I mean, there are fans coming down from the stands up top. You know, everything I saw is, is St. Mary's fans celebrating a, a great possession, and we have Ironwood people coming down from the stands, coming up in their face. I mean, this is not something that needs to happen at a high school game. Man, no way. Not a good representation right now. Because I watched the play. I, I know the St. Mary's fan. He came down. Uh, he celebrated the pass, the shot from St. Mary's. And the thing was, he didn't celebrate in front of an Ironwood fan. He celebrated towards the sections, which is why I'm surprised that you know we've got some Ironwood fans really riling up this crowd over here. And I hope this gets taken care of. Playoff basketball. It looks like we're hoping to get everything settled out right now. A timeout for Jordan Augustine and a much needed one. Five straight possessions. St. Mary's able to force a turnover. And you mentioned that defensive pressure all across the floor. Styles Phipps continues to be a playmaker. It's that defense that he brings, that he can force opposing players into, into turnovers. And that's what he was doing to Shadowvine, who's a tremendous ball handler. But at the same time, when you try to sell the foul a little too much, that's when you lose your dribble. And that's what happened on consecutive possessions to Shadowvine. He tried to sell the block and just didn't work. And physical presence of Styles Phipps definitely going to be a difference as we are still trying to get everything settled down here. It's a packed gym. And everybody continuing to fill in here as the open playoffs continue here in Arizona. like we've got everything settled. You know, we'll get back to basketball, what really matters here in a night like this. Wetzel will give it in. And as Carabio will bring it forward. 23-20 Ironwood, but St. Mary's has come screaming back with a 10-0 run. Paul gets pushed away. Now Barnes gives it up to Williams. Easy two. <laughs> This game has just completely unraveled for the Eagles. Styles Phipps takes a second off, and Colby Barnes, the freshman, shows off the defensive skill and forced another turnover. Shadowvine, tough shot, and he's fouled going to the rack. And it's getting more and more physical. They have to give some props to the freshman. There's actually Noah and Dua on that defensive play. They have to give him props on that steal, but. Yeah, he, he comes in every once in a while for Styles Phipps and gives him a break, but he still brings that aggressive defense that Coach Lopez loves. Yeah, and two of the 5'10 freshmen as the first shot from Shadowvine is no good. Really good poke away on the far side and got it away from Shadowvine and forced a turn over the other end. As Kenny White will come out, Styles Phipps comes in. And Jaden Jones also into the ball game for Ironwood. Second shot for Shadowvine is good. And it's back to a two-point game. St. Mary's has not had a lead today. As Noah Ondua will lead the charge offensively. 
Now to Phipps. It's a slip on Shadow Vine, now driving in. Tough. Floater, no good. Back down with it on Dua. So big since coming in. Styles Phipps, long three. It rings out. Williams with another offensive board. Now on Dua. On Dua is stripped. And Ironwood forces a much needed turnover. Shadow Vine to the rack. Little floater, no good. And St. Mary's a chance to push it the other way. Phipps, beautiful move into the corner. Caspian Jones wants a three. No good. Tipped up, Williams with another offensive rebound. Now to Jones. Another miss. And the Eagles will slow it down. As a physicality in this one. Starting to play a factor here. Now inside, Jones gets it back up. Little floater rings in and out. And we'll go back out on Styles Phipps. They're going to say it's out on him. And Damon Lopez, Frusher, there was no foul call. No inbound in his gift on the baseline. Under three minutes left to go. And another violation on Ironwood, taking too much time underneath the basket. Well, and both times it's been Noah Gift who hasn't passed the ball in, which is surprising considering he's the he's this Ironwood team team's best player. You know, he has to be more aware of the time that it's taking him to pass in the ball. Still without a point in this second quarter. Ironwood just with one point in this second quarter. But a 13 to one run. Jones pulls up again, it's no good. Comes back down, gonna go out of bounds. Who's it off of the say it's off of Jaden Jones? Kenny White's coming back in, I think for Noah and Dua, the freshman. And the St. Mary's team is four starters and Sebastian Hatsakorzi in the sophomore. Hatsakorzi will inbound it to Phipps. Double team into the corner right now. Phipps doing anything he can to get out of it, so they're gonna call a foul on Shadowvine. It's the first foul for Ironwood in the second quarter. That one's going to be called on Jaden Jones, the senior guard. That's going to be his second. Something to watch in the final two minutes and 29 seconds as he's an Eagle starter as well. Top of the call on the back end. Shadowvine was the one working on Phipps into the corner. So now Hatsakorazin at the right block. Kisses it off the glass. No good. Still ringing back around. Finally able to come down with it is Josh Dillard. Two-point ball game. As Ironwood still looking for their first field goal in this second quarter. Carabio working on Hats of Corsi, now double team. It's stripped away. Williams up to White. One on one to the rack, and he gets it to go. Tied at 24. And the first time we've said this ball game is tied since seven seconds into this game. Channel Vine, now to Gift. Gift on White. They'll step back out and slow it down. Step back three. A short, clangs off the front iron. Caspian Jones stops his feet. Now to Phipps. 90 seconds left to go in the half. Now Jones in the baseline. Beautiful dish. Phipps to the rack. And it's good. Wow, they're going to get Styles Phipps for a charge there. I. That's gonna be his second foul, and that's two frustrating fouls for the senior guard because, man, that one was was close. And, you know, Ironwood's moving underneath the basket. I think Styles might be in control, but that's a tough call, and one that I give props to the officials for making with uh, a concerted effort to, to show what they're calling. You know, there is no question on the call, which is good. That's what we want to play off game with this atmosphere. Yeah, underneath, Phipps going straight to the baskets and the action seemed like it had fallen true, but ended up taking it away. Open three, no good. Coming back down with it is Williams. Ironwood, now seven minutes into the second quarter, do not have a single field goal. White driving in baseline, little floaters miss. But when Duma tries to come back down with it, it goes back over to Carabio. Now to Gift, left wing three. Yes, sir. There's that guy, you just can't leave him open. 
Give him an inch of space, he's knocking it down. White. Foul and the shots. Working baseline. And Kenny White will go to convert the three-point play. Just a great body control move from Kenny White there. The senior guard has really provided an offensive spark recently. He's one of the four St. Mary's players averaging double digits. He's at 10 points per game. Back this to back, season. Yeah, back-to-back -back seasons that he has averaged double-digit points a ball game. The Desert Sky Region first teamer last year. A big three-point play, and we're back even at 27. Styles Phipps will come out as A.J. Moulin Dumba is in, so is Noah Andua. We'll see one change here as Caden Wessel will come in. Landon Brownstein will come out. 11 seconds the difference coming out of this between shot clock and game clock as Shadow Vine He's con completely is holding the freshman. Holding on on Dua. I mean, how do you call that on St. Mary's? On Dua. Goodness gracious. He's completely hooking the freshman's arm down. Anyone who's up here can see that. He's holding him. It's the classic James Harden move. Andua was trying to get out of it as much as he could, and they'll call the foul on him. Tough one there. Calvin gets it past the timeline. Driving in on Dua. Stops his feet, dishes it off, and a foul. Josh Diller goes down hard, and he'll go to the line. Hard foul there from Cam Williams. A nice job, though, from Josh Dillard to get him up in the air. I believe that will be Cam Williams' second foul. So he's going to have to survive the final 30 seconds without picking up his first, or excuse me, his third. Four fouls for St. Mary's in the second quarter. And again, Ironwood just with one field goal in this second quarter. It was the third three of the night for Noah Gift. Dillard misses the first shot. Styles Phipps will come in. And still trying to communicate who's going to come out. It's going to be the freshman to know on Dua. Taylor makes the second. And Ironwood back with the lead again. Shot clock is off. With a half a minute to go. Phipps has loved these moments. See if he's the one to take control. Caspian Jones with 20, now to Kenny White. Back over to Phipps with 15. Working on Carabio. Inside, snaps his feet. 10 seconds left to go. Got to give it up. Beautiful dish. Duma gets it to the rack. St. Mary's has their first lead of the day. Four seconds left to go. Shadowvine with two. Driving in. Shadowvine with one. Puts oh, it a shot and he's fouled. My goodness. With 0.3 seconds left on the shot, or excuse me, on, uh, on the game clock, you pick up. Cam Williams' is third foul. That is going to be big come this second half. With physical pressure from Cam Williams, then ever more important in this second quarter to get this team back. Shadowvine makes the first. And the lead that lasted about 10 seconds is stripped away. Second shot is good. Maybe one chance for a final shot. They won't get it. And that will end the first half. A very, very eventful one. And here in this second half, a 20 to seven run in the second quarter for St. Mary's and they brought themselves back within one point. Uh, that's what St. Mary's does. They play physical, they play hard the entire game. And sometimes that can wear teams down when you're full court press pressing a team like that, forcing them to go up and down the court, maybe at a speed that they haven't done so far this season. You know, Ironwood is, has really been on a hot streak. We mentioned 19 straight wins for them, so for them to be up one point over St. Mary's is big in Boole Gymnasium. We're going to get a 10-minute break for you all and come back after halftime for what's sure to be another classic game of St. Mary's playoff basketball. Big one here, second round of the open AIA playoff. St. Mary's down by one at the break, 30 to 29 in favor of Ironwood.
Getting ready for the second half of action. Second round of open playoffs here in the AI. A St. Mary's taking on Ironwood. The Eagles lead 30 to 29, but a big second half surge for St. Mary's on the second quarter surge for the Knights. A 22 to 7 second quarter in favor of St. Mary's. Jaden Taylor alongside Chris Farendorf and St. Mary's will start off with the ball working from left to right and Styles Phipps already with five points today hoping to set up the offense. And surprisingly Cameron Williams the sophomore forward for St. Mary's he's going to start this second quarter in the game with three fouls. Phipps tough jumper off the iron no good Come back down with his Josh Dillard. Now to Ayer Shanovine, who was second on the team early with seven points in that first half. Dillard trying to find something. Gives it up to Shanovine. He puts up a three. No good. Playing his back off of and Dumba and out of bounds. It'll stay to the Eagles with 15 to shoot. St. Mary's looks like they've settled down on offense. They know Gift is the shooter. They're trying to force any other Eagles player to get it going. Gift a long three, it's short. Goes off of Mwenjumba again and out of bounds. Tough break there, a couple odd clangs off the iron. A couple unlucky bounces for St. Mary's to start this third quarter. Shadowvine dumps it in, Carabio straight from him. Mwenjumba the one to grab it. Now Phipps, a one on two right now. Tough shot, off the glass, rings in two. Styles Phipps now has seven points in this one. Gift driving in, and they'll call a jump ball. Possession arrow to Ironwood. Kenny White has done it. Just a tremendous job on Gift defensively. You know, after that first quarter when he hit Gift, as in hit a couple three pointers early, White has really stuck to him like glue for the rest of this game tonight. Five points offensively as well as. Looks like we're trying to have a discussion at the scorer's table right now. They'll keep it on the baseline. Gift to inbound it. Already two five-second calls today. And they'll hand it off to Diller. Now to Shadowvine. Amu and Tumba. 25 to shoot. Shadowvine drives in. Stops his feet. Dillard on Williams the baseline. And can't get it inside. Shadowvine works back out. Defensive pressure big right now for the Knights. Open look, no good. And Williams comes down with it. Jones, top of the key. Driving in, gets it off his foot, rings over. Kenny White trying to grab it. And the possession arrow will go to the Knights. Great job by Kenny White jumping onto that ball to force a jump ball. That's Kenny White's game. He gets down and dirty. He gets on the floor and will get on any loose ball. And St. Mary's team, they know that they can count on him for that. White puts up a three. No good. Coming down with it is Jones. Now over to Williams. At the free throw line, it's good. St. Mary's a three-point lead. Their largest of the day. Channel Vine. Now over to Gift. You mentioned Kenny White really Putting on the defensive pressure. Now the switch. White forces away. Another forced turnover. Now the other end. St. Mary's has gone on a tremendous run from this second quarter. Continuing on to the third. The defensive presence has just been too much for the Eagles. 25 to 7 is the one run right now for St. Mary's. It's elongated since the end of the first quarter. Shadowvine trying to body himself inside, but he misses the shots. Williams, mid range, jumper is good. That shot is just automatic from Cameron Williams. Seven point lead, and St. Mary's has entirely flipped the tide here tonight. Carabio working on Phillips. Phipps, open three, Carabio rings out, coming back down with it is Jones. Jones gives it away. Now over to Carabio. Open three. No good. Phipps now on the offensive end. Double teamed and foul. And that's what Phipps does best. You mentioned it in the first half, Jaden. When he draws contact, he makes sure that the officials know. We get a slew of changes right now. 
as Jones, Carabio, and Dillard will all come out. Wetzel, Brownstein, as well as McCooey will come in for Ironwood. 37-30. Phipps inside of Jones, wide open, lane to the rack. Nine point lead and Jordan Augustine will take a timeout. This gym is electric from the St. Mary sideline and it is dead quiet from Ironwood. I mean, these fans are just absolutely stunned at what they've seen. That first quarter got them really talking. They were up a lot, Ironwood that is, and since then it has just been all St. Mary's. It was a 14 point lead at the end of the first quarter for Ironwood. They scored the first 10 points before anybody for St. Mary's could find an open shot and the Knights have come storming back. Looking around the valley here in the open, 66 to 33 the score right now up in North Scottsdale, the two seed and Notre Dame prep putting on the 15th seed in Highland. And the winner of that one will face the winner of this one this next week, a big matchup going into the quarterfinals. Yeah, that's gonna be a big matchup. And you know St. Mary's wants that rematch versus Notre Dame. They lost them in a close game very early on in this season. You know they want that matchup. But off of that Caspian Jones dunk, there's no better opportunity for me to give a shout out to his grandma watching from Canada, Nana Mary. We thank you for watching tonight's matchup all the way from Canada. That's why we do it. Going global, able to show off this great team, this great program. And a battle here in the open second round. Brownstein. They're going to call a double dribble. Another forced turnover for St. Mary's and defense continuing to turn in offense. Brownstein just has had all sorts of trouble dribbling the ball tonight. 39-30, 419 left to go in this third quarter. White, open three. Yes, sir! <laughs> Kenny White have a day. Eight points, an absolute menace defensively. Shadow Vine tries to dump it inside, and Kenny White, who is trying to poke it away, we call him the foul on Gift. I think he'll take that foul, though. It's Kenny White's check-in, and if he didn't get called for a foul, it might have resulted in a pretty open Gift layup underneath the basket. Gift 12 points in that first half, was the leader for Ironwood. Nothing thus far here in this third quarter, over halfway through. Shadow Vine. Got to give it off. That's got to be Near close. the five second call and it's given away. Phipps one on one. Too easy. The Euro step for Styles Phipps and he's up above double digits. Carabio the other way. He lays it in. 12 point game and what a change for St. Mary's it's been. Phipps backing down Shadow Vine. Double team, open shot, no good. A lot of hand checking going on from Shadowvine. He'll put up a three. It's short and Phipps to the rebound. Long pass, it was deflected by Carabio. And now Ironwood on the other end. Gifts, lays it up and in. This is where you have to control the game if you're St. Mary's. You just saw a 4-0 run from Ironwood. If you're the Knights, you have to make sure that this possession counts. Lopez. Shouting orders to Phipps, who hands it off to Jones. Lob up top, easy two for Cam Williams. That's just a beautiful set play from St. Mary, something they did not do well to start the season, but as it's gone on, they have just been great at those set plays. What the mismatch. It was there on the inside, 6 foot one to 6 11 as Shadow Vines three, a toilet bowl rings out. Phipps, straight in, little flip. And they will get called in the foul, going up for the shot, and Phipps will go to the line. Giff frustrated with that one as his feet cannot stop. And Ironwood, you know, faithful don't like that call, but much like the first one, it's a 50-50 call down there. Now we all know St. Mary's point guard, Styles Phipps, is, is in control of his feet at all times, and so you just have to time it exactly right if you're gonna get him for a charge. Phipps makes the first. 12 points by our count up here tonight. And defensive impact has been even more. 
Goes two for two. And we'll get a quick change here. Cam Williams will come out with his three fouls. And Sebastian Hatsikorzian, the sophomore guard, will come in. 14-point lead. It's tied for the longest lead on either side today. And two different ball games for St. Mary's. Such a great second half this far. Gift, long three. Clangs out the left iron. St. Mary's looking to press. Phipps, double team. Somehow hands it off back to himself with a call him out of bounds on the baseline. Referee said he came from out of bounds to grab that ball. That's why he was called. Noah Gift is going to shove out now for Ironwood. This is when St. Mary's can have the opportunity to extend this lead from 14. Noah Dumba and Phipps talking and they're liking to allow this team to go across half court with no pressure. Carabio trying to drive in one on one on Phipps. A wild shot is no good. Now White gets the screen from Phipps. Phipps top of the key, wide open three. Just missed. And Carabio comes down with it. 48 34. 140 left to go in this third quarter as Cam Williams. Goes to the scores table. Now inside, Shadow Vine, wild shot, and he's fouled. And he's one of those guards similar to Styles Phipps where he's going to take any contact he can get to try to get to that free throw line. They'll go to the line. Two fouls on both teams here in this third quarter. for a moment here is kind of is slow to get up. It looks like he'll be okay. First shot's good. As now we'll see Colby Barnes come in for Kenny White. Barnes the freshman guard. First time we've seen him today. Shadowvine goes two for two from the line. He's now at nine points today. We'll get another change here as Gift will come back in. Logan Brownstein will come out. 12 point game. You think St. Mary's still goes with the pressure here? I think they probably might pull it back just a tad. Caspian Jones, left wing three is good. Caspian Jones, cash money here tonight. He has just been so big for St. Mary's. You know, early on, Styles Phipps was not able to get it going offensively as much as he probably would have liked. But since then, the supporting cast has just been on one tonight. It's the third three of the night for Caspian Jones, the six foot nine junior. Well, that first from UMKC and Pepperdine, a guy that is such a glue inside. Yeah, I mean, you can see how his game could potentially translate to the next level. You can see how the frame would translate to the next level. You know, he really put on a lot of muscle. His dad told me that he put on over 10 pounds of muscle in this offseason, and that's something that is hard for a developing high school athlete's body to do. But you can tell the difference it's made from his sophomore season to his junior. And you come from that and that physicality in the side, you add on the ability to shoot from both the mid-range and from beyond the arc. An impactful piece for St. Mary's. And big matchups like this. Now Shadow Vine will bring it up. Now to Gift. Doesn't want the three, gives off to Carabia. Nearly a minute left to go. Gift, tough three is good. That's why he's number one in 5A and three points made way downtown. And you could see on that freshman Colby Barnes just got totally lost on the help side defense. Moen Jumba inside gives it off to Phipps an easy two on the jumper. And Knights back up by 14. 44 seconds left to go. Carabio doesn't want the three. Well, and on the other end, Sebastian has a Corsi in his honor right now, and he picks up the foul. Sebastian has to make sure he's vocal about his defense. That's what Kenny White has been doing all game. 
on Noah Gift. You have to make sure that you are communicating with your teammates off of these back screens that Ironwood is setting for him. And it's the third foul for St. Mary's here in this third quarter. Of course, five will move it to the bonus. They'll say that Carabio stepped out of bounds trying to come in there and was too quickly coming out, and it'll be a turnover for Ironwood. In two seconds between shot clock and game clock. We'll see if Phipps wants to run it all the way down as much as possible. Phipps trying to set up his offense. 17 to shoot. Down to 10. 10 to shoot, 12 to play. Phipps, one on one. Drives in, dishes off. Caspian Jones is fouled going up. What a beautiful feed. And we've seen that so much this season. Yeah, Down in late moments, Styles Phipps thinking that everything's going to go his way, collapses four guys to him, and then finds the open man. Well, we saw that, me and you did, uh, at Mesquite when St. Mary's won. It was one of the final possessions. Styles Phipps did exactly that, got into the lane, made sure that the defenders were locked in on him, dumped it off to Caspian Jones for an easy two-pointer in clutch time. It's just so big for St. Mary's. Both of those players are. Jones above 10 points today. As Styles Phipps comes out, No Dua comes in, and Jones goes two for two for the line. Anthony Maciel will come in for the second time today. 6.4 left to go in this third quarter, 55-39. Shadowvine on Undua, five seconds to shoot. Shadowvine driving in, two seconds, it's stripped away. Got to put up a shot, Shadowvine throws it up. No foul, Call on either side, and that will end the third quarter. St. Mary's, what a turn of events. After a lackluster first quarter, they have turned on the Jets the last 16 minutes and lead 55 to 39 with eight minutes to go. Yeah, St. Mary's has just pl played a out of their minds after that first quarter. You know, you could feel the energy in the gym just completely dip down. St. Mary's faithful, maybe not sure if they could get back into a game where Ironwood, you know, they got out to a 10-0 run to start the game. They were up as by as many as 14. I believe St. Mary's, correct me if I'm wrong, Jaden, finished with nine total first quarter points, or was it seven? Nine total first quarter points. It was 23 to nine after the opening stanza, and since then, St. Mary's has put on 46 points. 46 points since that first quarter. On the other end for Ironwood, just 16. I mean, that's, that is crazy. That's a, lot, that's a big point swing, that's a big point difference. And right now, St. Mary's is going to have to make sure that they have that defense that has been so successful for the final eight minutes of this game. Another update out of North Scottsdale. And it's entirely the way a running clock right now for Notre Dame Prep up on Highland, 79 to 40 with two minutes left to go on that one. So it looks like Notre Dame Prep will get another chance to move their way into the quarterfinals. And they're one of the most, most well-rounded teams in the state. Well, I mentioned in that third quarter, St. Mary's got an early look at them that resulted in a loss. But once again, St. Mary's is going to have to get out of here with a win before they can think about Notre Dame. Carabio lifts one up. It's missed. Williams comes down with it. Now Phipps pushing the pace. Caspian Jones strips away. Shadowvine forces a turnover. Sixteen point game. We'll see how Ironwood will work these first four minutes. Amu and Duma now to Carabio. Open three, no good. Amu and Duma comes down with it and will bring it up. Phipps trying to get a cut over to Barnes. Open three, no good. He's been one of the most consistent shooters for this St. Mary's team so far this season. Gift over to Shadowvine. Now back to Gift. Beyond the right wing, slowing it down. Fatigue going to be a factor in these last seven minutes. Shadowvine on Barnes. Six seconds to shoot. Gift got to put it up. A tough shot's missed. Second chance is good. Laying it up and in it was Jaden Jones, and he's got his first points today. And a great follow off of Noah Gift shot where he just tried to completely sell a foul call. But these refs have been pretty on top of it tonight on both ends of the floor. Very physical game. They've kept it even for both ways. 
As that time. Oh, are we going to get a five second count there? I will call a five second call. Too much time there for Phipps. And another turnover. Kenny White back in for Colby Barnes. And once again, Landon Brownstein, who hit that first early three to extend Ironwood's lead, is going to check back in the lefty shooter. Jones and Carabio will bring it past the timeline. And we'll see how much more Augenstein or Iron will want to push the pace. If bodies Kenny White inside and gets a quick two. Six minutes to go. 12 point lead for St. Mary's. Phipps, tough shot. And it rings out, but he'll get the foul. We'll go on Blake Carabio, and it's the first foul this fourth quarter. It's going to be the second on Carabio. The big name to watch right now in foul trouble, Cam Williams, had three in that first half, but has not had one since. Yeah, he's been really good defensively in this third and fourth quarter of making sure that he is not touching any Ironwood players on any of his contests. Phipps once again gets himself to the line and makes the most of it. Hits both. 57-43. Jones over to Carabio, open three, rings in and out. Ball comes back down and tipped over to Caspian Jones. Jones will bring it up the floor and hand it off to Phipps. Williams, high elbow, tough shot, in and out, clangs off both sides of the iron. And the shot just doesn't go there for Williams. Carabio working on Mundumba. Driving in at the low block, they'll call a foul on the floor. And Mundumba frustrated with that one. That's two physical players playing physical basketball. AJ Mwandumba is getting the worst of that call. But, you know, it's only a second, but again, it's just that physical nature that both players play that creates that contact. Now into the corner, Gifts. Driving into the baseline, they're gonna call a foul there. Well, this confuses a point to the line, didn't know if Gift had gone out of bounds. They'll call a foul, the second on Kenny White. The third on Kenny White, and that's big time as well. That's two St. Mary's starters with three fouls. Yeah, three fouls, excuse me, second in the fourth quarter for St. Mary's. Open three in the corner for Jones, is airballed. Gift comes down with it, but is stripped by White. Another great defensive play, and White makes up for the recent mistake. Beautiful inlet pass, moving Duma for two. Talk about threading the needle on that pass from Siles Phipps. 16 point lead as that one's kicked out of bounds. Well, much like St. Mary's versus Mesa, it has seemed like every single time the Eagles have had something going offensively, St. Mary's has had a response. Lennon Brownstein will come out. Higher Shadow Vine will come in. Gift to inbound it. And Shadow Vine working on Moon Dumba. Gift driving in. Two mans in front of him, and Williams gets a hand on it. Ball still wrapped around right now. White and Diller on the far side. And they're gonna call it a jump ball at St. Mary's basketball. I mean, Kenny White is just absolutely impacting this game defensively. He is everywhere on the court. You cannot get him off of Noah Gift. He's been running around, pacing himself all day long. And his pressure to put on Gift. And when he's been out there, it's been impactful. Phipps, top of the key, is fouled. Carabio trying to get a hand in there to poke it away, and it's his third. Surprised that Carabio it, himself was surprised at that call. I mean, even after the whistle was blown, you could see he was grabbing Phipps' right arm. Phipps gets a switch now on Gift. Fresh set of shot clock. Top shots. Too strong, Mwanduba comes down with it, but it's poked away. Carabio, great defensive pressure there by Phipps. Now over to Gift, open three, no good. And it goes off the 
clock up above the backboard, and it goes out of bounds. Well, after Gift had made those early threes, I believe he made, might have made four in the first half. He has just been throwing up bricks tonight. One three across the last three quarters. This one strips away. Some miscommunication there, and Jones comes with it. And Jones Fitz. was limping a little bit. We have to hope he's all right. And out of the corner, Carabio. Or a shadow vine. Way too many bodies in the corner. Ten seconds to shoot for Gifts. Eight seconds. Contested three. Again goes too long. And Caspian Jones comes down with it. You mentioned just one three in the last three quarters. Well, it's probably been like one for ten at this point. He has just been throwing it up any chance he's gotten, which, again, is what the scouting report has said, so no surprise there. Dump inside, Caspian Jones. Bringing the roof down on this one. I mean, Ironwood just has nothing going for them defensively. Augustine's gonna take a timeout and needing to. Ironwood struggling to keep up with the pace, and St. Mary's loving what they've seen, and Damon Lopez just ecstatic for what this group has put together these last two quarters. Yeah, just three minutes and two seconds left in this game. St. Mary's up 18, and man, it's just been every everything going St. Mary's way again. We just can't say this enough since that first quarter. You know, real credit to Coach Damon Lopez for getting his team back in it. He used that early timeout. He used the break in between the first and second quarters to get everyone settled. And since then, his team has just been 110% giving it their all. 79-42, the final up in North Scottsdale. Notre wow. Dame prep takes down Highland with a running clock for the final five minutes. So the winner of this one will take on Notre Dame prep next Friday, 7 p.m. at Notre Dame prep. And what would be an impactful quarterfinal matchup here in the open. Well, and really quickly before this third quarter, got to give a shout out to all my guys in Los Angeles, including Brian Stinson watching this game. You know, we really thank everyone for tuning in and, and getting a piece of St. Mary's from all over this nation. And a piece of that one right there was Cam Williams, who comes back into the ball game and brings it past half courts. 2.45 left to go. And Phipps just going to slow it down, take as much time off the clock as possible. One-on-one -on, -one on Gift. Ten to shoot. Phipps, left elbow, almost loses it. Great pass. Now White, open three. No good. Williams down with the rebound. It's poked away. Who's it off of? They're going to say it's off of Ironwood. Josh Dillard, the last one to touch it. And that shot clock is going to reset once again. We're going to see here if Styles Phipps attempts to bring that ball out and hold, get some time off the clock once again. Beautiful dish inside. Phipps goes up with it and it's fouled. Now why take it out if you've got the wide open layup underneath? And a great dish from Caspian Jones. And that connection has been incredible this year. Some of the passes that those two have had to each other have, I think, stumped a lot of people all the way inside this building. Yeah, you don't really see a big passing into a guard too often, but when it's a guard like Styles Phipps who can finish everywhere underneath the basket, it's always good to get the ball in his hands underneath down there. Phipps misses the first. But will make the second. 62-43, 19-point lead for St. Mary's. 2-10 left to go in this one. Wetzel, Brownstein, puts up the three. And it's short again, and Caspian Jones with the rebound. The offensive boards today, really all the way on both sides of the boards today, St. Mary's is dominated. Yeah, I talked to an Ironwood um, representative before this game, and he said that St. Mary's, if they're going to win this game, would have to control the boards in the inside area. They, I would say they've done a pretty good job of doing that tonight. The guards, the bigs, all pieces of this night's team have had some pressure inside. Carabio and open three, no good. Phipps brings it back up, and there's 90 seconds left to go. White the open three, no good. And Muandumbo will get called for a foul. And I know White wants that three, but 
Phipps is telling him, you know, we'll just settle down here and finish this game. Josh Dillard's going to sub out. He's been playing the big man type role for Ironwood so far. They're going to get five guys in who can shoot the ball and score. They're going to need a lot of points from this final five in order to make a comeback. Wetzel will call a foul on the floor. That's the fourth of the quarter for St. Mary's. And again, you have to be careful once again because once you get to that fifth foul mark, the opposing team will be shooting two free throws in the double bonus every single foul from then on. Jeff working on White, double team now. Tough shot, too long. Caspian and Jones with another defensive rebound. 60 seconds left to go, and what a back half of this one it has been for St. Mary's. Down by 14 at the end of the first quarter. Have come storming back and will take a timeout to change out the squads and put in the guys that want to get some good minutes here in the open playoffs. Yeah, absolutely shell-shocked to start the game, St. Mary's was, and since then it has just been all St. Mary's. Ironwood has had no response offensively to St. Mary's defensive pressure, and defensively, Ironwood's just had nothing for St. Mary's sets. They've gotten open looks, they've gotten easy dunks, they've gotten a wide open threes, and. Again, I mentioned it earlier, it hasn't just been Styles Phipps. It has been this whole entire St. Mary's team, and that's what it is going to take for this team to make a significant run in this open division. Kenny White, some great defensive pressure today. Caspian Jones doing it on all ends of the floor, offensively, defensively, inside, off the glass. A big day all around for the Knights, and this is the type of games you got to win. You get smacked in the mouth early. How do you respond? The Knights have done so in a big way. No on Dua in here to Colby Barnes. Now to Arteus Jefferson inside. Ashton Musser to the rack. It rings out. 40 seconds left to go. And a foul on the floor. Since the first quarter, and that was so big for Ironwood. And they led by 14. Thus far here from the second quarter on, St. Mary's has outscored Ironwood by 35 points. First shot from the line is good for Carson Dean. Six foot two freshman point guard. Second shot falls. And just about a second between the shot clock and the game clock. Ondua driving in, hands it off. A little floater is good. Ashton Musser, the two. And St. Mary's leads by 21. Shot clock is off, but Brownstein gets the two and the foul. I just think everyone in this gym is just absolutely shocked at how this game turned out. You know, people on Twitter talking about a, uh, an early open division team maybe throwing a game early in the first quarter. That's not what happened tonight, Jaden. You know, these teams were fighting. St. Mary's is not going to want to get out this open division. They want to win it all. They're one step further. St. Mary's, 66 to 47 the final today. In the final three quarters, they outscore Ironwood by 33 points after a struggling first quarter. And again, you get to playoff atmospheres, you're gonna be punched once, twice, three times, and St. Mary's showing they can continue. And that's what's so big about having home court advantage in the playoffs. St. Mary's was not able to play a single game on their home court in last year's open division run. And they are able to play two this year. Coach Lopez talked to Alex Coyle and I before the Mesa game that look, this home court matters. Our home fans matter, and you could see that tonight because once St. Mary started to respond, the fans responded as well. Ironwood will keep their season going just in the 5A state playoffs. Their open chances end here today. And St. Mary's and their faithful go over to the student section and loving what they're putting together.
And the student section and this entire squad just happy to see what this group can put together in a year like this. They break Ironwood's 19 game winning streak. They have now won 16 straight. After a big win here this afternoon, St. Mary's is moving on to the Open Division quarterfinals. They take on the two seed Notre Dame Prep next Friday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. out there in North Scottsdale. And that's going to be a really, really tough test. Yeah, it's going to be a Catholic school versus Catholic school matchup, which is always fun. You know, St. Mary's has played Notre Dame once. They lost to them this season. They lost to them last season. So St. Mary's is going to want that revenge. And if you're a St. Mary's fan, if you can make that trip out to North Scottsdale, please do it because Notre Dame doesn't have a, a, a huge gym. You know, and so as many St. Mary's fans as we can get will make a difference, and we're going to need it because it's going to be loud. It's going to be a great fight, and Notre Dame has some tremendous athletes that I've seen as well. They've got some Division One talent as well. Anthony Batson really stands out in terms of uh, the physicality and the frame that he brings, and so we'll find out from the AI if we're able to stream that game, but stay tuned to Twitter because we will obviously be announcing it on We Are SM Hoops and myself. Uh, Chris Farendorf will be putting out the news next week. Going to be a lot of fun. The Open Division playoff chances for St. Mary's continue with a big win today. They take down the Ironwood Eagles by a final score of 66 to 47, a 19 point victory. And they prove they can continue to move on in a matchup like this. That'll wrap it up here on We Are SM Hoops, live for everybody, a part of this great production. I want to thank Alex Coyle for allowing me to take the seat here tonight for my partner in Chris Farendorf. I've been Jane Taylor saying so long, St. Mary's, the final score, 66 to 47.